All right, so I'm going to talk through real quick some of the things that I just discussed on the other video. All right, so what I have here is sort of just a basic DC motor. All right, so I've got two terminals where I can apply a voltage, and I can see it's a sort of long cylindrical thing. All right, what I did was I took apart a motor so you can kind of see what's inside of it. Okay, so here, this is the back piece I took off. This is the main section of it. Now this particular type of motor, this little piece of tape there, um, this particular type of motor, I said there always has to be a field source and I put a current carrying wire into the field source. All right, in, in this case, the field source is this magnet, so I can see there's a magnet here, a magnet there, okay. The rotor, the rotational piece, is this part in the middle, so I, it's basically stuck to the iron at the moment. If I push it down, all right, now we dropped out. All right, so here, is that iron piece with the windings. So you can see that this thing is cylindrical. And as I'm looking at it from the top, right, windings go down the top, right, so they go down on the top side and then back on the bottom side at any given time. All right, and I suspend this thing. I suspend it into that gap as shown. Now in reality, these, this shaft here that I've got on the motor would be suspended in a set of bearings. Okay, so if I put this back on here, okay, hard to do this with one hand. Okay, put that back on there, I can see how, the, how that shaft sits in a set of bearings. Okay, now the critical thing is how do I get current into here? Okay, so if I look carefully, let me pull this out here for a second. All right, if I look carefully on this rotor, okay, I said I've got copper strips, and I can see the copper strips here on the end, and that those copper strips, okay, are connected to the copper wires beneath, okay? This piece goes in this side of the machine. So if I look at this carefully, okay, so this guy would go in here like so, and I think I broke off one piece in doing that. So I put this thing in here like so. What I can see is these two ports right here, this is the VA port. I put a, I put a voltage on one side and I get, a, I get a current that will flow in on one side and a current that flows out over here. And what I can see if I look carefully in there, right, if I look in there carefully, what you can see is that there's a little brush that touches to that little piece of copper. As this thing spins, it's gonna be hard for me to show that, but as this thing spins, Basically, that brush is going to touch the copper in a different spot. That's the thing that makes sure that current's always, um, in, in the video I talk about the current always going down the top and, and then back down the other way on the bottom. That arrangement is what makes that happen. Okay. All right, now, that's what the machine looks like inside. One of the things I talked about towards the end of the video is how this guy sort of works, right? So I said, okay, well, if I take a machine and if I have that machine and I apply a voltage source, so VA, and then I have RA, LA, and then I have this internal voltage source, KM Omega, like this, KM Omega, like that. IA goes into the machine. I said the mechanical relationship on this guy basically is that the moment of inertia times the acceleration is equal to the torque applied minus the torque of friction, okay, which is to say that this is Km IA minus beta omega. Okay, And I said once I'm in steady state and this thing's moving at constant speed, this should equal zero. All right. meaning that the torque applied by the motor is exactly equal to the torque of friction working it has to work against. Okay. Now, the example I gave at the end of that video was I said, well, what happens if I grab the shaft? So if I grab motor shaft, you kind of know that the thing should slow down. Well, what that means is that the beta, the, the friction is going to go, not down, but beta 
will go up. All right? If I grab that shaft, the beta is going to go up. What that means, ultimately, is that if the beta goes up, I said that Km Ia minus beta omega, at least initially, is going to be less than zero. In other words, this term here, the mechanical friction term, is going to be greater than the torque applied by the machine, and this thing will decelerate. Okay, Should be the case that this thing is going to slow down. Okay. <clears throat> what I ultimately said is that after, if this thing slows down back to the circuit, Km omega, that voltage source right here will drop its magnitude. So the voltage across this resistor and inductor will go up. If the voltage across those guys goes up, that means that Ia is going to go up. So eventually, Km Ia, this guy goes up the speed goes down until eventually the speed will go down until eventually these guys equal zero and there's a new steady state so if this works right, I'm going to try this on a basic motor right? so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this thing and apply a voltage to this guy and he's going to start to spin All right. so I've applied a voltage in this case I'm applying about 14 volts 13.99 and I see the current is moving at about 0.2 amps thereabouts. It's fluctuating a little bit, but about 0.2 amps. And here's the motor that I've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab the shaft of this guy. Based on the arguments we made, if I grab the shaft, the beta goes up. So the applied torque over here goes up. That means this thing decelerates, right? The total net torque becomes less than zero. The guy should decelerate. The speed should drop. Speed drops. The voltage here, this voltage source, goes down. Voltage across this guy then goes up, current goes up, right, until eventually these two guys balance again. So let's see what happens. If I grab this shaft, I should hear this thing start to slow down, and I do. And if I look at the current, I can see the current going up. All right, so now he's at about 0.15. I grab the shaft. And I can see the current go up. If I really grab it, he goes up and he gives me as much as he can, and he's basically maxed out about 1.7 amps. Okay? So the basic ideas of the way the motor works are relatively straightforward. They're all captured by these equations, right? And we can clearly see how they truly behave in practice.